today. I am Sanya from All About Skin Wellbeing. I am sure all of you must be keeping good health. We all know taking good care of your skin is important for more than just your appearance. Fungal infections or mycosis are diseases caused by a fungus, yeast or mold. Mild fungal skin infection can look like a rash and can be itchy and annoying too. So let's today connect with our skin expert, Dr. Spandhana P. Hegre, live from Mangalore, to enlighten us on the topic of antifungal. Dr. Spandana P. Hegre is a trusted dermatologist in Hampankanta, Mangalore. She has completed MBBS MD in dermatology. She is currently practicing at Dermis Skin and Hair Clinic in Hampankanta, Mangalore. Today, Dr. Spandana P. Hegre will share her expert views with us on antifungals. Doctor, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much, Ms. Sanya, for the warm and welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. And as we are going to discuss a very important topic, that is fungal infection. Uh, so my very first question to you is that, that what is basically fungal infections and who is at the risk for fungal infections? See, fungal infection is basically an infection of the skin which is caused by fungus. So as you know, there are various organisms. You would have heard of bacteria. You, could have, you would have heard of viruses. So similarly, there are fungi. So these fungi can present in various forms. They may be present in the environment, they may be present in the soil, or they may be present on animals. And these infections can invade the human body. So fungal infections can infect the skin, which we deal with predominantly. Not only the skin, it can involve various other organs as well. These fungal infections, the serious infections are there, which can even involve the other organs of the body. For example, you say the lungs may be affected, the brain may be affected. So fungal infections can be anywhere and everywhere in the body. So who is at the risk of developing fungal infection? That was the second part of your question. So anybody and everybody can develop a fungal infection. So it is there is a common misconception that only if a person is very sick or immunocompromised, you say, so only they get fungal infections or a person who has a very pers poor personal hygiene. So whenever you think of fun fungal infection, you commonly relate it with the hygiene of the patient. So there's a misconception that only if the hygiene of the patient is very bad, only such patients can get a fungal infection. The affluent people may not develop a fungal infection. But it is not so. Even healthy people, irrespective of the socioeconomic status, can develop a fungal infection. But the risk of serious fungal infections is more common in people who have some underlying problems. It could be some uncontrolled diabetes mellitus or if they have any other coexistent diseases, say for example, HIV. In such patients, the uh, chance of developing the serious fungal infection, that is the internal organs being involved, is more common. But what we deal with that at, as a dermatologist, what we deal with is the superficial fungal infections, which can involve anyone and everyone. Okay, so as you have said that anyone and uh, everyone can have fungal infection despite of uh, a lifestyle. Uh, doctor, is it like that, you know, lifestyle, uh, like someone who is you not know, doing exercise, someone who is not doing exercise, someone who has a healthy lifestyle, uh, are these factors also affect the fungal infection? Yeah, see, fungal infections, basically, it's not only about lifestyle. See, there can be so many fungal infections. There are specific areas of the bodies which can be involved. When we talk about the skin infections, so my primary focus today would be on the subcutaneous fungal infection. That is the fungal infection which affects the skin. You would have heard of something called as a ringworm infection, a very commonly used term. So these infections are predominantly seen in people in the area where there are folds. So say, for example, the thigh folds. So the thigh folds, the armpit. So these are the, the feet. So it is not only about, you know, healthy lifestyle. And so say, for example, a person who is always wearing a tight fitting synthetic clothing, who is a little bit on the obese side. So there is an increase and there is a constant sweating and friction happening. So such patients have an increased chance of developing a fungal infection over the thigh folds. A person who is constant, constantly wearing socks and shoes, the skin is always occluded in the feet. So such people can have an increased risk of developing fungal infection over the feet. 
Okay, so there are uh, basically many areas where the fungal infection can develop. Uh, Doctor, are there any types of fungal infection if we uh, discuss about uh, like, you know, the various types, as you said that, you know, skin fungal infection are very common. The ringworm uh, is basically a very common fungal infection which uh, people uh, see. But are there any types of fungal infection as well? Yeah, so there are various types of fungal infection. The first one is the most, if we're talking about the skin per se, the most superficial fungal infections. So these fungal infections can just present as some mild discoloration of the skin. So these are, you know, you may see some small patches on the skin. It may be like, you know, light white patches or slight brown patches, usually seen on the neck, chest, and they're usually asymptomatic. So the patients will have this and they're completely asymptomatic. It's just that there is a change in the color of the skin. So this is a very superficial fungal infection. Next, you have all the next cutaneous fungal infections, which we predominantly refer to as a ringworm. So even though ringworm is a commonly used term, this category of fungal infections, they not only involve the skin per se, but they can involve the hair as well, as well as the nails. So these are the three most common sites, the skin, the hair, and the nails for the development of the common fungal infections, what we routinely see in our practice. In the skin, it can involve any part of the body. It can involve the face, the beard area, the entire body, including the palms and so on. So any part of this body can be involved, as well as the nails. So fungal infection of the nail is again a mostly a hidden area which often which is often missed. So a person may be having a fungal infection of the nail and is constantly scratching other areas of the body. So the infection easily gets transmitted. So one part about these fungal infections, they are communicable. They are communicable from one area to other. So because of scratching, he may transmit it from the nail to the other areas of the body as well. So these are all the superficial infections. Then you have a little deeper infections. These superficial infections, whatever I mentioned just now, so they'll have predominantly itching and some rash will be there. You may see multiple concentric rings or reddish rash, which may involve any areas of the body. So depending on the severity, some people may have one or two such rings or in severe cases, it may involve the entire body as well. Next category is a little deeper infections. We call it as a subcutaneous fungal infections. These usually happen because of trauma, especially we see in farmers who have a thorn prick or you know, some wood or something has pricked their skin. And that is a site where these, they develop swellings. So there will be swelling discharge over various areas of the body. The next category is the systemic fungal infections. So systemic fungal infections are the drugs, are the fungal infections where the other parts of the body, that is your lungs can be affected, your brain can be affected. So all these internal organs also get affected. So this is a little severe cases, which is seen in patients who have some background underlying illnesses. You would have heard of uh, the black fungus during COVID times, mucormycosis. That is one of the most deeper fungal infections which we usually see. Okay, so these are the various types of fungal infection uh, uh, and the areas which can be affected. And as we have discussed about what is basically fungal infection, the type of uh, fungal infection. Now coming to what is basically antifungal and how does it work? Okay. So antifungals are a group of uh, medications which are known to work against these fungal infections. So when you uh, think about antibiotics, you would have heard of antibiotics. So antibiotics work against bacteria. You would have heard of antivirals which work against virus. So similarly, antifungals are a group of drugs which target the fungi. So now these antifungals can exist in various forms. So you, what we commonly use is the systemic antifungals and the topical antifungals. So systemic antifungals are the drugs which are administered orally. So the patient has to take the medications by mouth as, as per the prescription of a dermatologist or a registered practitioner. Then we have topical antifungals. So these topical antifungals come as creams, lotions, ointments, shampoos. So various forms are available. Depending on the severity of the infection as well as the site of the infection, so these antifungals can be used appropriately. Then there are other injectable antifungals. You have for these injectable antifungals are usually reserved for the deeper and the systemic kind of fungal infections, what I mentioned. 
for the cutaneous fungal infections or the ringworm infections, what we deal with, predominantly we use oral antifungals along with topical antifungals. That is tablets as well as various creams. Okay, so that means uh, like there are antibiotics for uh, various uh, health problems and for uh, fungal infection also, uh, antifungal are uh, the medication, am I right? Yes. Okay, and doctor, as you have mentioned about two antifungals that is systematic and topical, there is a question from our uh, listener, uh, from our viewer as well, that how do systemic antifungal differ from topical antifungals? See, see, topical antifungals are applied to the particular area of the where the infection is present. So they work locally. Systemic antifungals, since they are administered, uh, you know, orally, they circulate in the drug and from within they come and enter the skin and they, that's how they act. So they, they can be used, systemic antifungals are used when there is a large body surface environment. Say, for example, a person has maybe a small area, if you say a 2 by 2 centimeter area of a fungal infection. So it is more practical to give a cream to be applied to that area. Whereas, uh, if there's on the other hand, you have a patient who has around 60 to 70 percent body surface area involvement. So, it is not at all practical. So, how will he apply that cream which comes as a 50 gram tube? He might empty that entire tube in one single go. So, in such situations where there is increased body surface area involvement, systemic antifungals come into role. Okay. And doctor, as, as you told, you know that uh, some people, uh, because the antifungal um, are the medication which are given to the people uh, which are taken uh, taken, and sometimes it is applied by cream or uh, something like that. Uh, I am sure that you might have come across many people who use over-the-counter product or some cream suggested by their friends. Uh, and you know, the case is being worse when they come uh, to you. Yes. So the scenario what you I uh, have just mentioned is the most common scenario we frequently encounter. So if I have to say there are hardly any people who come naive to us, there are only really a handful I would say who come without taking any medication. So that number is very small. So there is always a misconception that okay, it is just a small skin problem. I will apply some cream which is either given by my neighbor or friend or the medical store. So everybody wants to try something before coming to a dermatologist. So, and most of the times what happens is they would have applied the wrong medication. So that's where the problem starts. So a simple fungal infection, which could have been managed easily by either one or two creams and a tablet will take a very prolonged course just because of misuse of the over-the-counter medications, what you have mentioned just now. So there are a lot of over-the-counter medications available, which are freely available and they are less priced. So people misuse it. These over-the-counter medications predominantly, though they have some amount of antifungal in that, most of them contain steroids. So steroids, uh, I think all of everybody would have heard of this word steroid. So most of these antifungal, these creams, the over-the-counter preparations, which are usually given for the fungal infections, will have some amount of steroid in that. So this steroid will be the major culprit in not healing this infection. So the patient applies the cream, the patient gets a temporary relief because steroids are known to give a temporary relief. But then as soon as the patient discontinues the medicine, so they are back to square one. Again, that infection reappears. And this vicious cycle continues. So the patient goes and buys the same cream again because he's getting a relief. As soon as he stops, again, the same story continues. And by the time they come to us, they've gone too far that, you know, they'll require a little prolonged treatment because the fungus also becomes resistant to our regular treatments. So my advice to everyone is, never you know, have a self-medication. So even though it is a minor skin problem, it's always advisable that you consult a specialized a dermatologist for all your skin problems so that you know it doesn't go overboard and cause major problems. 
because then this is like one person applies and it is a communicable disease. So it spreads from one person to another. The other family member gets it. So the same cream is being used by all the family members and it keeps on spreading from one person to another in the house. So it is very important that you take the right treatment at the right time as well as see to it that all your family members are also well treated at the same time. Right, absolutely. So do not self-medicate yourself and do not use over-the-counter products because as doctor already mentioned that it can be harmful for you as well as uh, around people who are around you uh, for them as well. Uh, doctor, sometimes people also use, you know, um, uh, some uh, medicines or some oil which are suggested by home remedies, we can say. Um, uh, using home remedies uh, in a fungal infection is uh, okay. What do, What is your take on that? The seed. Unless and until there are scientific studies to prove that home remedies work, it is difficult to comment on it. So, like we go, we are we practice evidence-based medicine. So we prescribe something which has a strong scientific evidence. Home remedies could vary. Like, you know, say for example, for one person, the over-the-counter cream is always there in their house. So it could be their home remedy. So as long as it doesn't do any harm. Okay, if it doesn't do any good also, it's fine. But anything which doesn't do any harm, most of the home remedies, what people use, what you're referring to are irritants. Say, for example, they would have applied lemon, garlic, all these things. They try out various things which are basically irritants. So these things will cause a lot of irritation of the skin and a layer of the skin may come out temporary and they may find a temporary relief. But that doesn't mean that, you know, the infection is gone. So once the skin regrows, the infection will regrow with that. So it is just a relief. It is not a treatment. Right. It is just a relief, not a treatment. Uh, so do uh, consult your dermatologist before applying anything on your skin. Doctor, when we are talking about the medications, um, you would really like to know that how do antifungal medications work? So antifungals, I think I've already answered this question to you. These antifungals, what if if you want to go the technical way. So these fungi have a wall. So these antifungals are going to disrupt the wall of the fungus. It will enter the fungus and then it will try to kill the fungus. So this is in a simple way in which I can put how the antifungals work. So they okay. break the wall of the fungus, they enter it and kill it. Okay, and they kill it, uh, the, the fungus, we can say. Uh, doctor, there's um, a live viewer's question uh, asking, which antifungal is commonly used to treat yeast infections in women? Uh, there are various uh, antifungals available. You have a whole group of antifungals which can be used. So, but anyway, never self-medicate. So, even though you think it is a yeast infection, so please consult the dermatologist before taking any treatment. The dominant group of antifungals are the azoles which are used. Right. So do not self-medicate. That is uh, uh, the keyword which we are taking uh, today that you do not self-medicate yourself. If you are in any kind of infection, any kind of uh, fungal infection, go and refer to a dermatologist, an expert. Uh, doctor, there's a question from our viewer that uh, eat sore food during antifungal infection is causing more infection. See, as I've already told you, these infections are communicable. They may be present in the environment they may be present in the soil. They may be present over the animals. And they are transmitted from one person to another. So this transmission of fungus happens because of, it could be because of sharing of cloths or sharing of toiletries. So these are the modes of transmission of these uh, fungal infections. So food intake is not going to cause a fungal infection. So it is present on the most superficial layers of the skin. So food Intake of any particular food per se may not cause it. So what can happen is sometimes some particular food, when a particular type of food is taken, some amount of molecules may be released in the body, which are called as histamines. So these may cause some sensation of itching or burning over the lesions. So that's how people attribute it. So no food will cause a superficial fungal infection. So this is the, this should be a take-home message. 
So food can cause changes in your symptoms. Say, for example, a particular person may say, when I eat this particular kind of food, I feel that the itching is more. So it is the itching, the symptom which is there. It is not the infection. The infection is not going to increase by having any particular kind of food, but the itching may increase. So when they continuously keep on scratching, then there is a possibility that they scratch it, scratch it, and it spreads to the surrounding areas. So that is the only logic I can tell how food will increase it. But directly, no food item is going to increase it since it is there in the superficial layers of the skin and it is a communicable disease. Okay, so the food can only increase the itch, uh, itching part, not it cannot increase the infection. Yes, definitely. Okay, and doctor, there is a question from our viewer Pooja asking, how do pollen antifungals work? Uh, see, pollen antifungals are uh, not commonly used. Yeah, I think she's referring to amphotericin B. I'm not sure about it. So these are the antifungals which are not used for the superficial fungal infections. They are used usually reserved for the systemic fungal infections. Okay, okay, doctor. And there's a question from Tina asking that can antifungal medication be used uh, for children as well? Yes, anti see fungal infections as uh, in, in the beginning, if I, if you would, uh, remember, I had told fungal infection can affect anyone and everyone. So what I meant by everyone was this fungal infection can affect an infant as well. Even, you know, we have even seen babies who are one month old, one and a half month old having fungal infections and it can affect any age group, even a person who's a hundred year old also may get a fungal infection. So definitely the children have to be treated with antifungals. Although the dosing, the schedule, the type of drugs what we use in children may be slightly different than what we use in an adult. But treatment with antifungals is a must even in children and babies as well. Right. So uh, that means anybody and, and anyone can have fungal infection, which include the infants and children as well. And if someone... Uh, because in children, the most common uh, source of infection is the mother. So what happens is uh, there is again one misconception. Pregnancy, during pregnancy, no, we are not supposed to take any treatment other than, you know, the prescribed medications for the pregnancy that could be the iron and calcium supplement nothing else to be taken so that is where the problem starts so the person the pregnant lady has an infection during pregnancy she doesn't take any treatment and then the infection continues post delivery also so over that span of six to seven months the infection would have spread so much later on when she handles the baby she's going to transmit the infection to the baby as well so that's how usually babies, the small children or the nannies, most often the other source of infection for the children is the nannies, especially look into the nails of the nannies. So that is one more nidus of infection. So the nail infection in the nanny may transmit to the child. Okay, that means that these are the precautions one should take uh, before, uh, you know, see that if they see any kind of uh, infection in their body, they should go uh, to an expert. Am I right? Yes, yes. Yes, because as you said that it can pass, uh, it's a communicable uh, disease. It's a communicable disease. Yes. Right, right. And doctor, um, is wearing the cotton clothes can give re relief to the antifungals uh, as well? Uh, can you repeat the question? Is wearing the cotton clothes give relief to the fungal infection? Is it like that, that, you know, if somebody is having a fungal infection and uh, taking treatment as well? So how do clothes, uh, wearing, you know, tight clothes or wearing cotton clothes, uh, is it like that, that they should have some specific uh, uh, clothing uh, as well? Yes. Yeah. See, that's in, when you come into the treatment of fungal infections, there are two aspects. The first is the medical management, what we call. This medical management would include whatever I have mentioned till now, the systemic, the oral antifungals, the topical antifungals. So the second aspect of this is the lifestyle modification. So only medical management may not give you a cure from fungal infections. So clothing is very, very important. So all our patients, we advise them 
to switch over to a loose cotton, you know, less tight fitting clothing. It should be loose, it should be cotton, it should vary. Avoid jeans or tight fitting clothing because jeans is, you know, the cloth which is hardly washed. So you use it multiple times. So it can act as a source of infection. So even the undergarments, whatever they use, everything has to be cotton so that you don't get a recurrence. And it's not only, you know, loose fitting cotton clothing. A lot of people have these sacred threads lot of waist threads and threads around the hand, you know, see, you know, which is tight for religious purposes. All these also serve as a source of infection because the infection, the fungus will be sitting there and even though your skin infection gets cured, it comes back from that thread, whichever is there in the body, that loose thread, to back to the skin. So all these are small issues. Rid of the fungal infection. Otherwise, the person takes the infect, uh, takes the treatment. They may have a temporary relief and on discontinuation, so it may come back again. So loose fitting clothing, avoiding all the sacred threads temporarily, so till the infection gets relieved. Avoiding jeans. So best is you know for females and all we say use this palazzos which are available, the loose ones, the cotton ones. So clothing, yes, cotton clothing because it absorbs whatever sweat is also there. It is going to absorb. So, cotton clothing is a must in the person who's having fungal infections. Okay, so cotton clothing is must. Whosoever is having uh, fungal infection, uh, clothing uh, is very important as uh, doctor already mentioned. Uh, doctor, if somebody is uh, taking antifungal drugs, how long uh, do someone need to take uh, antifungal drugs? So, the duration of treatment with antifungals depends again on the severity of the infection. Say, for example, a person who has who is a fresh patient, a naive patient, who has not used any treatment. So, a treatment course of even four weeks might be sufficient. Whereas, on the other hand, if you have someone who has a very severe fungal infection, that person may require a treatment for a prolonged duration, maybe two to three months to four months or so. So, again, it is case-based. So, it is like, you know, not one shoe fits everyone. So, as dermatologists, we see the patient, we reassess the patient once in three weeks to four weeks. We call the patient back for a follow-up, look into the progression, whether there is improvement or worsening, and accordingly titrate the dose and decide the duration of therapy. But minimum, minimum is two weeks. In creams also, minimal, the patient has to use it for two weeks. Maximum, again, it will be case-based. On an average, a patient would require two to three months of treatment. So that means case-based it is. Two weeks is the minimum uh, somebody has to take the medication and then it depends on how uh, the case it is, it is more severe or less severe. According to that, the medications they have to uh, take. Okay. And doctor, when we are talking about medication, there is a question from a viewer, Jyoti, asking that can antifungal medication cross the blood-brain barrier? Uh, antifungal, the routine oral and uh, whatever topical antifungals which we do, again, I think she is referring to amphotericin B, which you might be referring to. These are uh, the other things. She's, the regular medications, there are no issue with the regular antifungals of crossing the blood brain barrier. Okay. And uh, doctor, when we are talking about medications, uh, what are the potential side effects of uh, antifungal medication? Are there any potential uh, side effects of antifungals? Uh, side effects are minimal and uh, they are minor. The most common ones what uh, we see is patients were complaining of some gastritis. Gastric discomfort is the most common side effect which we usually see. The rest of the uh, side effects are not so major. So some patients we do see some alteration in the liver functions, but that happens over a very prolonged time. So whenever we are giving antifungals, above a particular period of time, if you are continuing, your doctor will always do a blood test it may be a liver function test and see and assess that and only decide on continuing the medications. Otherwise, as a general norm, gastritis is the only important side effect which most people 
encounter. Otherwise, they are relatively safe medications. As long as it is given in the right dose prescribed by a dermatologist. Right, right dose they prescribed by a dermatologist, not prescribed by someone, uh, friend or neighbor. Uh, uh, that can affect uh, uh, more. Uh, doctor, uh, there is another question that doctor, can antifungal drugs be used in uh, veterinary medicine? Can antifungal drugs be used in? Veterinary medicine. Veterinary medicine. Okay, I'm not a veterinary expert. So, antifungal drugs are used. Uh, I have seen, uh, you know, veterinary experts also physicians giving antifungal drugs. I think, yes, they do use. But I am not sure of the formulations and all which they use as I have not studied that form of medicine. But uh, most often uh, what happens is uh, they, we encounter the scenario where uh, most of the times you see people who have pets. So the pet has a fungal infection and the infection is transmitted to the owner, mm -hmm. the pet parent. So then in such cases, along with treatment of the patient, we do tell them, you know, get the pet also treated by a vet so that, you know, the source of infection is gone. Otherwise, it's going to recur again and again. So they use antifungal drugs, but I'm not completely aware of what all formulations and what drugs they use, but it is used. That means it is curable. It is not like that. It is not curable. It is curable. Yeah, yeah. It is curable. It is curable. It is not a disease which is going to stay with you. It's not diabetes or hypertension or your cholesterol which is going to stay with you lifelong. It is curable. But how early you will get a cure is in your hands. So if you start the treatment at the right time, go to the right person, then you will get a cure. Otherwise, if you are in the wrong hands, you are using left, right and center, whatever is there you are using, you have tried out everything, not taking the prescribed medications, then this can affect your quality of life because there are some patients who would have had these infections for years together because they have not got the right advice. So it's not only about taking the treatment, it's about the taking the right treatment and the right duration of treatment. So what happens is if I want to say you, most of the times, it's like, you know, skin. Kuch nahi hoga. It's just the skin. So you start the treatment. Say, for example, a person has a fungal infection and he comes to me. I tell him, okay, you take this medicine for one month. Apply this cream for one month. So the person will start to apply the cream. And in one week, he'll see, oh, yeah, nice. The cream has worked and uh, my fungal infection is gone. So he will discontinue the treatment because the fungal infection is gone, right? Why, why he needs to apply the cream? Two times a day, he has to spend five minutes or 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes at night. He can scroll Insta and see at that time. So he'll utilize the time for something else. But what happens is clinically when he is seeing, he may feel that the infection has gone. But the fungus is slightly suppressed. It's like, you know, the fungus is just taking rest for some time. It's sleeping. So it is going to come back after some time. So after two to three weeks, again, he is going to get back the infection. So that's why the right duration of treatment is also important. So do not discontinue the treatment till your dermatologist says, okay, you have your infection has cured and now you can discontinue. Along with that, the general measures, okay, those have to be followed for a little longer period of time. Uh, we also tell our patients to wash all their cloths in hot water because this clothing is one important source of infection. So patients wear some clothing, the fungus goes and sits in that cloth. So you would have kept it inside and reused that cloth after two to three months or so. And it can stay there in that clothing. So once you wear that clothing again, it comes back. So that's why always we tell the patients, wash all your clothes, whatever you have used every day, wash it in hot water so that it kills the fungus so that next time you don't get a recurrence. So all these things have to be continued for a little longer period of time, maybe three months, maybe six months or so. Only then you will get a cure. Otherwise, it is going to be a continuous recurring disease. So it comes, it goes, again, it's going to come back episodic. 
right so right time right uh, uh, decision and going to a dermatologist can definitely help uh, you in curing your uh, fungal infection uh, so do not uh, self medicate and uh, doctor as we have already discussed that you know uh, lifestyle and if someone is taking a proper diet also uh, affect the fungal infection my question to you is that who shouldn't take anti fungal medication is it like that you know some people uh, who have some kind of uh, disease or something like that uh, should not take antifungal medications see antifungal antifungal is a broad term and in that there are various subclasses okay so you have allylamines as well there are various group of drugs so there are certain group of medicines which cannot be given in patients who have an existing heart disease or they have they are on some cholesterol lowering agents so in such patients we may not be able to give a particular kind of antifungal but there is always a second substitute or say for example a person is having a liver failure or a kidney failure so there are some group of drugs which cannot be given in this category so we can switch over to other alternate antifungals available which may not be very efficacious but yeah they will do their job and in some patients some dose adjustment may be required we may have to reduce the dose to half of the standard dose so that you know it doesn't alter their background disease so antifungals can be given with some adjustments so with some adjustment and uh, with the right, I think the right proper treatment uh, will definitely tell you that what uh, medicine and what antifungal medication is uh, helpful for you and what is not uh, uh, something which you can use or apply on your uh, skin as well. Uh, uh, doctor, I just want to add pregnancy. Yes. That's what I was talking about pregnancy. Again, in pregnancy also, there's a misconception you cannot use any antifungals. No. There are certain groups of antifungals which can be used during pregnancy. Definitely it can be used. So there are very safe antifungals which can be given during pregnancy. So in case you're pregnant and you have a fungal infection, please don't hesitate. Go and visit your dermatologist. They will definitely help you out. Yeah. So don't hesitate. If you have any kind of fungal infection, go and uh, see to an expert, a dermatologist. Uh, doctor, if I ask you, what is antifungal resistance uh, and how does they work? Yeah. Antifungal resistance, especially to the oral antifungals, which we there are resistance can be of two types. One is a primary resistance and one is secondary. So primary resistance is like, you know, there is one antifungal and by default, that organism is resistant to that antifungal. It's not going to work because of the primary nature of the organism. The second is secondary resistance. That is, the patient has used a lot of things. Initially, the fungus was, the antifungal was active. It was working against that fungus. But over a period of time, the person, the fungus develops resistant to the drug. So initially, it was working. Later on, it stops working. So that is second. So resistance in uh, antifungal, the testing is also not commonly, it's not so easy to do it. And there are various theories. So most of the times we don't feel, you know, the resistance is the issue. Why the fungus is not getting cute. I'm talking about the cutaneous fungal infections. So it may not be the resistance, which is the major issue with not the non-response of the cutaneous fungal infections. It is mainly the abuse of the topical medications, the over-the-counter medications, which predominantly leads to a clinical non-responsiveness. So it may be abuse of steroids, usage of inadequate dose or inadequate type of or a poor quality of drug, I would say, which is more important for a non-responsiveness in antifungal therapy rather than the primary drug resistance. Okay. okay. And before uh, we end this live session, um, uh, we got to know about the fungal infection, antifungal. Any advice you would like to give to all the viewers watching uh, this live? Yes. So the first and foremost advice is anytime you see any kind of rash in your body, you suspect any fungal infection, please don't self-medicate yourself. So get it treated early by the right doctor. Dermatologists are the best 
doctors to visit for all your skin related problems. So don't go to your neighbor, don't go to your friend, don't use a cream which is there lying in your cupboard, the general cream which is there, there will be written, this cream will cure all your skin infections, right from your fungal infections, your allergies, your pimples, crack foot. So one cream suits all. So it's not going to happen. So start treatment at the right time and follow your doctor's advice. So take the treatment as long as the doctor prescribes you. Take it appropriately. Religiously you take it. And little bit, little bit of lifestyle modifications, which I've already told you. Because washing clothes, again, you know, washing the clothes separately. We all have the habit of dumping all the clothes in the washing machine. That is one more source where infection spreads from one person to another. So washing the clothes separately is also very, very important so that you don't transmit the infection to your immediate contacts. And never use over-the-counter steroid-containing medications. Right. So don't use over-the-counter medication. Do not self-medicate. Wash your clothes nicely. And uh, Dr. Any take away message for all our viewers? Fungal infections are curable. Though they are communicable, they are curable. So don't worry. Don't hesitate. Visit your dermatologist. Okay? You will be, you will definitely get rid of your fungal infection if you have taken the right advice and the right treatment. Right. right A lot of patients tell, no, oh, it's it's not going. It's not going. I'm having it since so many years. It's not going. It's because you have not got it treated the way you're supposed to get it treated. That's why it's not going. Right, absolutely right. So right uh, time, right uh, dermatologist and going to a dermatologist is the foremost important thing uh, to do if you have any kind of fungal infection. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Spandana P. Hegre, for your valuable time. And uh, it has been really a very quite informative session for our viewers. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a wonderful host. <laughs>